Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to do another example of how to find the electric field. For this case, it's going to be due to an arc of charge. And it's not just any arc of charge, it is an arc of charge where the charge density changes, the linear charge density changes with angle, with theta. So here you can see that theta, or I should say lambda, the linear charge density, is equal to some constant times the sine cube of the angle theta. So you can see how the charge density increases as the angle gets closer to 90 degrees because the sine of 90 is 1. That means that the charge density right there, the linear charge density is, is lambda sub naught, and over here will be 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. Okay, so what's the electric field right here? Imagining that the arc has radius A, and so we can then see that the electric field will consist of two components, a y component and an x component. But the best way to handle that is simply say I'm going to start with a small amount of dq. And the dq of course is going to be equal to the linear charge charge of lambda times ds, a little arc length ds. And ds that's going to be expressed in terms of a d theta of course because a would be the radius, d theta would be the small little angle element and the, the charge density will come from there, so this can be written as lambda sub naught times the sine cube of theta multiplied times a times d theta. And of course, this a doesn't belong to the angle that actually goes in front, so we can write this as a lambda sub naught sine cube of theta d theta. So that would be the small uh, charge element anywhere along the arc, and it'll of course be a function of theta. So that means that here we're going to have a DE, and the DE is going to be equal to K times DQ divided by the radius A squared. Now the radius, of course, is the fixed quantity, simply A, the radius of the circle. Now, this here, and let me use red, this will be DE in the Y direction. The D in the Y direction is going to be equal to K DQ divided by A squared times, now of course this vector right here is the same as the vector over here that would be opposite the angle theta this is the angle theta opposite the angle so therefore we use the sine of theta and since dq can be expressed like that so de in the y direction would be equal to k times a lambda sub naught sine cube of theta times the sine of theta d theta and the whole thing divided by a squared, which again we can simplify because this A cancels out that A, we combine the signs, so we have DE in the y direction is equal to K times lambda sub naught divided by A times the sine to the fourth power theta d theta. Now, if you already noticed there up in the upper right corner, I already have the integral of the sine of, to the fourth power of theta, in this case I did in terms of x because I knew I was going to end up with something like that. Okay, in the x direction, DE uh, in the x direction is going to be DE times the cosine of theta. Um, and uh, let's see here, that would be equal to DE, which is right here, which is K times DQ divided by A squared times the cosine of theta. And then, of course, when we substitute, uh, this right here, a lambda sub naught sine cube theta d theta. We can then write that de in the x direction is equal to, uh, let's put the, well, the a is going to cancel out the same way. So it's going to be k times lambda sub naught divided by a times the sine cube of theta times the cosine of theta times d theta. So now I have my electric field element in the x direction, electric field element in the y direction. What do I need to do now? Is I need to sum them all up. All the y components sum, all the x components summed up, and when I do that, I can then add them together and I have the final electric field strength at that location. Okay, so let's first go ahead and, and uh, integrate this. So we're going to integrate all the way from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two. So, e in the y direction is equal to the integral of all the de y's uh, going from 0, theta 0, to theta of pi over 2, which is equal to, take all the constants out, which is equal to k times lambda sub naught divided by a times the integral of sine 
to the fourth of theta d theta. So we already have the integral laid out right there for us. Of course, in this case, there's no a. We can simply cut out the a. And so this would be equal to, and again, the integral is from 0 to pi over 2. So this would be equal to k lambda sub dot times a, oh, divided by a, times the quantity. This would be 3 theta over 8 minus the sine of 2 theta divided by 4 plus the sine of 4 theta divided by 32, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. All right. Now let's see if we can simplify things out a little bit. If we substitute in a 0, these, of course, will go to 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. If we substitute in a pi over 2, 2 times pi over 2 is actually pi, and the sine of pi is 0, so that cancels out. And 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi, and the sine of 2 pi is 0 as well. So these two terms simply do not play a role. They cancel out. They go to 0, both with the upper and the lower limit. So the only thing that's left is to plug in the upper limit here. And forget about the lower limit, of course, when 3 times 0 is 0. So what we end up with is this is equal to k times lambda sub naught times 3 times pi over 2 divided by 8. And that would be a. And then if we simplify things a little bit more, 2 times a is 16. That's in the denominator. So we could say that this is equal to 3k lambda sub naught times pi divided by, that would be 16 times a. And that would be e in the y direction, the magnitude at least of the electric field in the y direction. So now we want to do the same thing in the x direction. So e in the x direction is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of dy, d, dE in the x direction, which is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And what is that? Uh, let's see here. We have it right here. So we can take out the k, lambda, and not an a. So let me at least take out the constants. So that would be equal to k lambda sub naught over a times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. What's left? So we have the sine cube of theta, and we have the cosine of theta, d theta. Now that's an easier integral to integrate because notice that we have the differential of the sine of theta. The differential of sine is the cosine d theta, except we need a 3. If you take the differential of that, it is 3 times so the way thinking about that, let me show you what I'm thinking about. If we let u equal the sine of theta, then du would be equal to the cosine of theta d theta. And notice that I have a sine, that I have a u cubed du, so I have the complete, this is the differential of the sine of theta, so I'm good. I can go ahead and integrate that. I just had to think about it for a moment. All right, so it's not the case that this is equal to k lambda sub naught over a times the integral of this, which would be the sine to the fourth power of theta divided by the new exponent 4, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Now, when I plug in the lower limit, I get 0. When I plug in the upper limit, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this gives me 1 quarter. So this would be equal to 1, uh, or I don't need the 1 there. I can simply write k lambda sub naught divided by 4a. Wow, it almost seems too easy, doesn't it? But that's what I get, k lambda over a, and that would be one-fourth, and that would be e in the x direction. Okay, so now I have an e in the x direction, and I have an e in the y direction right over here. Let's see, is that about the same? This would be about 12 over 16, one-fourth, yeah, looks about right. Okay, so just another quick check. The effect in the y direction would be yes. So I can see where dy would be larger than in the x direction because all the, most of the charge is over here, which has a bigger effect on the y component. I'm just kind of making sure that I got something that's reasonable. I would expect my y component to be bigger because there's more charge up there. I expect my x component to be smaller because there's less charge here where it would affect the x component. So it looks like we're good. That means that E, the electric field, can simply now be written as the x component, which is k lambda, oop, that's not a good looking lambda, lambda sub naught divided by 4a in the x direction, plus, ooh, and let's see here, since the x direction, the way I drew it is negative, I better put a negative in front of it, because it's in the negative direction, 
and then the y is also negative, so I'll put a negative here, negative, and the y component would be 3k lambda sub naught times pi over 16a, and that's in the y direction, there we go, and there is my final result. That would be the electric field caused by this arc of charge that has this varying charge density. And that's how we do that.